What's up, my dudes? My name is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Today, I am going to be filming Don O'Brien's, I'm gonna be reading um, Don O'Brien's favorite books. We're jumping right into it today, huh, with this intro. So, like I said, I'm going to be reading Don O'Brien's favorite books, but when I looked that up, all I saw was an interview of Don O'Brien um, talking about the Shining, the movie. Did you read the Maze Runner book? Yes. What's your favorite book of all time? Oof, wow, of all time? This is, this is important. The Shining. There's a maze in The Shining. I love The Shining. <laughs> and there is, there's a huge maze that freaks me out of The Shining. Imagine that one being cold, yeah. like in the snow, too. <laughs> um, so, uh, this, in turn, is going to be me reading The Maze Runner and The Shining uh, to see how I like it. You know, I read The Maze Runner in high school and absolutely despised it. I threw it across the room when I was finished reading it, hated it, swore to never read it again, and I never picked up the sequel or the last book or the prequels. So today, we are going to be doing a deep dive, a vlog, into The Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials, and The Death Code. And then we're going to be talking about The Shining, which I've read already, but I plan on rereading uh, for this vlog. So without any further ado, like I said, my name is Caitlin. Feel free to like, subscribe to the channel if you like this video. If you don't like this video, um, feel free to unsubscribe. Um, you can dislike the video if you choose to do so. That would, you know, my content probably wouldn't show up on your, your feed anymore. Um, but that's your decision. That's up to you, okay? I am not going to question you. Um, leave a creative hate comment down below. I have worn this sweater in a video recently, um, but I'm wearing it with a brown turtleneck today to match with the brown Taz pattern. I love Teddy Fresh with all my heart and soul. Yeah, just leave a comment down below. Um, leave a hate comment down below. Make sure it's creative, you know? Um, and another thing, you know, I seem to be getting some, like, hate comments, and I see them in my notifications, but, like, you guys are deleting them. Stop deleting them. I am asking you to leave hate comments, okay? I saw in my Stormlight video that people tried to leave comments that, you know, they were disagreeing with me, but they must have deleted them. Keep them! Please! Like, please keep them. I'm asking you in these intros for fucking, for you to leave hate comments, for you to leave creative hate comments. Discourse, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thought process, okay? Like, is it that much to ask? Stop deleting these fucking hate comments after you post them. I'm getting a little pissed off, as you can tell. Anyways, let's just hop right into the video, starting with the Maze Runner. So... We're here sitting in my car in a grocery store parking lot. I wanted to come and update you to let you know that I've begun reading The Maze Runner and it's boring. Yeah, it, it's boring. Um, I am about two minutes into it and it's just as boring as I remember. Only reason why I'm reading this because I love Dylan O'Brien um, and that's that. Yeah, that's about it. That's, I'm I'm still feeling the residual effects of all too well. Are you guys? Let me know down below. Hey. Well, hello everyone. Um, hi. How are you? I just thought I'd come in and and give you a little update on on where I am in my book. We are currently on the Maze Runner. We have discussed this. I'm on chapter 18. And I, I feel like I have lied to myself um, my entire life. I'm 119 pages into it and I don't absolutely hate it. I, I don't despise it like I remember despising it the first time. I feel as though I've lied to myself um, and I'm angry just a little bit. So I'm going to continue and I will let you know we're about 31% of the way through right now. So. So, everyone, I had to hop on here really quick to address the elephant. Oh my god. So, I had to hop on real quick to address something really, really quickly. Let's see, I am currently 
64% of the way through The Maze Runner by James Dashner. This is for my Dylan O'Brien vlog video. We're reading all of Dylan O'Brien's favorite books, aka Dylan O'Brien has only ever said he read The Shining or that his favorite book's The Shining, but then he continued to reference a uh, movie parts of the the shining um so i decided that i'm gonna read the shining and then the entirety of the maze runner trilogy because i absolutely despised the maze runner when i was a youth then okay when i was a youth i only read the first one and i never read it again i never picked up the second book never picked up the third book because i hated it but like fuck i'm angry i i wish that there is some sort of record of why i hated the first book so much when I first read it um I'm mad because I'm really enjoying it I'm very angry with myself I spent so many years hating on this book and now I'm rereading it as a 22 year old and I'm like oh it's not all that bad um James Dashner actually does a lot of pretty um sophisticated things for a young adult book you know I'm we're seeing constant recall uh in connection <clears throat> things make sense you know, he's foreshadowing the end of the book. You can tell as someone who's, like, read it already. As, a, you know, like... Personally, I really enjoy it in books when things don't have consequence. And things... Or... <laughs> I personally enjoy it in books when things have consequence. So I like when there's long residual effects on people from, you know, big events... And James Dashner does that really well with Thomas in this book. And I feel like that's part of what I hated the first time around, which is really weird. Another thing that I think I hated the first time around, which really disgusts me, is I thought Thomas was like some puny, like weepy boy who just like complained about everything. But I feel like reading this as a 22 year old, like James Dashner was trying to portray mental illness. And, like, my immature ass just could not get that through my, my thick brain. So, yeah, I am a little disappointed in myself that it took me this long to read it again. But I'm actually really enjoying it. So, Dylan O'Brien, thank you for making me read this again. And who knows, maybe I'll enjoy Scorch Trials and The Kill Order. Who, who knows? But, yeah, that is my update for 64% of the way through the maze runner hello everyone i am here to update you on my reading for the past couple days so a lot has happened since i've talked to you last i believe i last talked to you about 68 percent of the way through the maze runner i have finished the maze runner by james dashner at this point i finished it last night uh closed my eyes went to bed woke up in the morning i feel i feel sad um, insert my tweet here from this morning. Um, I feel angry, just like I felt angry finishing the book the first time, but for a completely different reason. I completely hated on this book for years, years and years and years upon end, um, just for me to enjoy it at the end of the day. Uh, I feel like I've thrown blasphemy on the names of James Dashner and Dylan O'Brien for taking the role of Thomas. Uh, my entire life until I reread this book and like I really don't hate it I I didn't love everything about the book you know there was a savior complex everything did seem a little bit too easy for Thomas and Teresa and you know I don't really like Teresa as a character she was honestly just there to to push the plot along I would have liked to see like a man we could have had some like you know gay gay happenings there you know that would have been better to see than like some fucking you know, not even you know cut that out cut that out Teresa was just pointless we could have done with just Thomas on his own okay um but besides that like I actually really enjoyed it uh the things that I disliked about it the first time I feel like are what made me like it this time for some reason I remember thinking Thomas was super weak and stupid the first time around but this time around like I see James Dashner really held true to the principle in writing that when something happens, that there are consequences to those actions, right? And I feel like I, I saw the consequences and mental turmoil in Thomas's head the entire time, you know, from every single action and decision he made 
which I think is what I didn't like about it the first time, but what I really appreciated about it the second time. Yeah, I'm interested to move on to Scorch Trials. I haven't read Scorch Trials at all. This is going to be my first dabble into the rest of the Maze Runner trilogy, and I'm really interested. And, you know, maybe we'll watch the movies along with them. You know, maybe I'll put some clips of me watching the movies so that way I could see more of Dylan O'Brien's beautiful face. But yeah, I, I feel lied to. Um, I feel sick, disgusted, uh, dry heaving, gagging on the floor because of all the hate that I sent James Dashner's way. And I'd like to issue a formal apology because the Maze Runner is actually pretty good. Fuck. Uh, November 30th, I am in my mother's car and I just started The Scorch Trials by James Dashner. I am, I'm feeling a lot. I like it. It opened up quite strong. You know, they wake up and find people hanging from the ceiling. Um, and now they're gone. I've just gotten to that point where they're gone. I'm about like an hour of the way through the audiobook. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm a little upset with myself for not giving James Dashner the chance that I should have given him when I was in high school. I'm not, I, like, I don't remember quite why I hated the Maze Runner so much. I don't remember if it was my own thoughts and feelings or more so, like, other people's thoughts and feelings that I bandwagoned on. But now I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, I'm having a great, great old time reading these books. So, James Dashner, thank you. Um, like I said, about an hour of the way through the audiobook. Just picked up some Starbies for myself. That's where we, uh, started it. So... Anyways, hopefully this one recorded and we can move on to our next vlog clip. Um, so yeah, I hope to finish the Scorch Trials either tonight or tomorrow. And then we can head on over to the Kill Order or the Shining because I currently have both of my Libby. So, what's up guys? Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of a different view for this update for the reading Dylan O'Brien's vlogs. I wanted to show you what my nights look like. Uh, some nights, most nights, not all nights, but most nights. We got Dobby sitting right here. He's the puggle Dobby. Then we got Ellie who's in the back corner. That is Ellie, our latest rescue. We got her about three years ago, isn't that right? Ellie named after Eleanor Roosevelt. And that curled up back there that's Bucky Barnes, um, obviously named after Bucky Barnes, and he truly takes after his namesake. He, he definitely does have that winter soldier side of him where the Russian government just takes control of his brain and he really just goes haywire. We are missing one kitty cat. Um, his name is Cappy, named after Greeks Cappy, and don't ask me why I named my cat that. I, I just did. So these are my animals and this is my update on the Scorch Trials. I am, I would say about 38% of the way through. Uh, and I'm really enjoying it so far. You know, we don't, he constantly is thinking about Teresa, which we're still not, I'm, I'm still not sure why, you know, why is Teresa even relevant? She's not relevant whatsoever in my mind. So I'm just kind of confused about what's going on, you know, why does he care so much about Teresa? That's my only thing. Otherwise, I'm really enjoying it. You know, I like that they're out in this, like, scorch. We've just approached the, this this new city. You know, we'll see what happens. I, am I enjoying it as much as the Maze Runner? I don't know. It's a lot more internal because he's not really talking to his fellow um, muckers that much. That's not even, that is uh, Adam McIntyre. That's why I was watching while I was filming. Uh, not even filming. Why, blah, 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 blah. That's why I was watching while I was editing. That's not even uh, Ruckers. Ruckers, is that the, the lingo that they use? Well, yeah, anyway, uh, it's super internal, and I like how he can talk to other people in his mind besides just Teresa. Hopefully this moves on to be, like, more than just Teresa, because, like, she just, like, bores me. I wish that, like, James Dashner, I feel like he subverted so many tropes with all of his male characters, but then his female character is literally, like, salt and pepper. Like, that is not the only two spices that exist in this world, but those are the only two she's seasoned with and it's fucking boring. So yeah, I'm bored with her. 
So hopefully, you know, she could either get better or she leaves. She exits the story. Because if I get a good story about some boys, um, maybe introduce some LGBTQIA, that would be great. Because I'm feeling some vibes. I don't know if that's, like, a thing that other people feel. But, like, I feel like I feel some homoerotic tension between Newt and, like, Minho, maybe. And, like, Albie thrown in there, last book, but he's dead. Um, let me know if, like, I'm completely missing the mark on that one and, like, you can yell at me. You know, I'm a big girl. I can take criticism. Um, but yeah, that's how I'm feeling about the Scorch Trials. Not as great as the Maze Runner, but still not, um, diarrhea worthy. Like, I believe the Maze Runner was for about six years of my life. So, we're, what, what am I gonna do today? We're gonna go eat some food, then... Um, as we're going to make food, I'm going to start drinking because later tonight I am filming a reacting to the 2010s book sphere drunk, uh, drunk reacting to, uh, book sphere 2010s. And I'm super excited. No one else has done this video and I have archives on this computer here of mine. Absolute archives. So sorry, someone was moving their trash can, but we're gonna go through this. I'm highlighting some different movies and such to go over the content that I have for in my computer. And it's going to be a riot, a great time. So look out. I'm sure the video, the video is definitely already gonna be out. I'll link it in the cards up here. Yeah, so this is me. These are my puppies and that's what I'm going to do. And that is my update on Scorch Trial by James Dashner. Dylan O'Brien. Do I think he's actually read these books? I don't know. He, I feel like he embodies Thomas well in the first movie from what I can remember. So probably. Um, do I think he enjoyed it? I could see him enjoying this. You know, he seems to be, he's a pretty private dude. You know, he didn't go to Taylor Swift's SNL after party. I'm sure he was invited. Um, you know, he's pretty private. So I'm sure he liked the introspectiveness of like Thomas. I wonder how he felt about Teresa. I really don't like it you know, let me know. That's it. Bye-bye. All right. Ouch. Oh, oh no. Stay. Stay. Oh. Stay. No. Stay. 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 Oh, you're not going to stay? All right. Well, I tried to make him stay, but... I just wanted to update you guys on my progress. Let's uh, change this angle. All right, so I finished The Scorch Trials today. I enjoyed it. I am so happy with the way that The Scorch Trials ended. And if you have been watching this vlog, you'll know why. And that's because Thomas no longer trusts Teresa. I've been stanking out Teresa since the beginning. I did not like this girl, okay? I could tell something was a little off with her. And you know what? I was fucking right. You know, I was correct. She is the betrayer. Did she actually betray Thomas? We are going to find out in the death cure. But yes, I finished the Scorch Trials. I would say it's a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. You know, sitting right there with the Maze Runner. I enjoyed it. I don't know how much I enjoyed, you know, like the running around, um, kind of like, it's very much like a great hunt, a, a second book, you know, they're going on a journey, a destination, uh, wedding, if you, if you will. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Did Dylan O'Brien read the Scorch Trials before d playing the movie? Um, I don't know. I haven't seen the Scorch Trials movie yet. I, I should watch it um that would maybe be fun and then maybe we can watch it together but do i think he he watched or read it probably you know read the source material for the things that he's doing do i think he liked it yeah i would say so it was enjoyable we finally have him realizing that teresa isn't the shit the only thing that i really don't love about these books is like because of the circumstance he conveniently knows everything and that's just annoying to me. I don't really love that, you know, especially because it's not explained yet. And now we're going on to the third book and we still, I feel like we don't have like a full explanation. So yeah, um, that's why it's at a 3.5, not a four stars, but I did enjoy the book. I 
enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would have if I, you know, had told myself six years ago that you were going to enjoy the Maze Runner and the Scorch Trials. I would have, like, spit and laughed and, like, hollered. But here we are. I don't even know what to say. But this is where I'm at right now. And, yeah, that's that. Bye. That's it for the Scorch Trials. Let's move on to the Death Cure. I can only hope that you can see me in this shot. Hello, hi, here I am. Um, we are in a bit of a different spot today um, because I'm at my boyfriend's house sitting in his basement. I am currently, I wanted to update you on the death cure because I read that yesterday on my way to his house and practically all day during the day. And yeah, I've gotten pretty far. I'm 85% of the way through the book. I just looked at the audiobook. I have 37 normal minutes left, but I've been listening to it at like 2.4 speed. So this book has been flying by. I have actually got to say, I really have enjoyed these books. I really am loving Thomas's distrust of Teresa that we're getting in the death cure. Thank fucking God. If that changes at the end of the book, I'm going to lose my top because I really hate Teresa and I've had mistrust from her from the beginning. But I love how we get this slow... You know, Tom is finally feeling feelings about Brenda. Like, I'm here for Brenda. You know, because it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna fucking hop on, on Teresa and fucking make love to her because I love Teresa. No, with Brenda, he didn't even like her at first. And then we get slowly there. We get the feeling. So I, I also have a feeling Brenda's gonna screw them over. Um, so this clip may bite me in the ass. Um, but I'm prepared to um, take that L. Um, yeah. I gotta say, I'm pretty sad I didn't give these books a chance when I was in high school because I feel like I really would have enjoyed them. It sucks to suck. Also, it's really weird that like the whole premise of these books now is like surrounding a, a pandemic, a global pandemic. Being in 2021, it makes me a little anxious reading these books um, because a lot... I, mm, mm, I'm sure if you're like a global citizen of the world, you understand why I, I am saying this. Um, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, that's made me, that's like probably the only thing in the past couple books that's made me just like a little bit anxious is like reading about a pandemic and like, yeah, yeah, I don't really love that and like Wicked and all that because I feel like there's so much gray area, you know, um, finding a cure that's a noble cause, but at what cost, you know? And that's the whole point of this trilogy. Um, but once you're really in a global pandemic, it's like, you know, millions of people are dying. So I'm not that we're finding a cure, but we do have vaccines that are being withheld globally. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna get into uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies and how they're all pieces of shit. Um, so yeah, I have really enjoyed the death cure. Dylan O'Brien, did you enjoy the death cure? Um, I don't know. I feel like I need, again, I need to watch the movies. You know, I need to see how Dylan O'Brien does as Thomas throughout the, the Maze Runner trilogy. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to force my boyfriend to watch me, watch them this weekend, maybe. Um, um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, what else do I have to say about the death cure before I finish it? Um, I'm sorry I didn't update you guys a little earlier, but, you know, I'm not willing to vlog in the car with my father. That's that. Um, I hope this clip wasn't too fucked up. Um, let me continue reading. I do. Sorry if uh, the frame is shaky, because I'm going to hold you up instead of propping you up like I did before, because the lighting was not the best. But... You're better propped up on the couch like this. Sorry if we're a little crooked. Anyways, like I said, I really enjoy how, oh my God. I enjoy how James Dashner continues to bring up Chuck and Thomas's point of view and how it affects him to this day. I think that's really important in books and like book trilogies, book series to show consequences in someone's like mental psyche. And I think he does just that with, um, with Chuck and then now with him having to kill Newt he really struggled with it he really didn't want to kill his friend because he saw Chuck die right in front of him he didn't want to lose another friend but he also wanted to honor his last friend's wishes and um 
that was a really impactful part of the book. I was annoyed that he didn't do it right away because for me, I was like, oh my God, look at him struggle. Like he's not your friend anymore. Just shoot him like he's asking you to. Um, but I understood like the, the trauma that Thomas has been put through with his friends. He did not want to lose another friend like he lost Chuck. And this time it would have been him that killed him. And I really enjoy how James Dashner includes that in the novel. I think that's really uh, well done. And yeah, that's another reason why I really enjoy The Maze Runner and the trilogy in general. So yeah. Um, I again would like to apologize for my plant that is slowly dying. In the background of uh, these vlog clips for the death cure, um, the circle of life, um, if you look at the plant itself, I'll show you later after this clip, there's one leaf on it that's not yellow at all. So it's not bugs, it's not underwatering or overwatering, and a new leaf is coming out. Oh, I feel like I do maybe see some spots on its stem. But that might just be some marks. I don't know. We'll look at it a bit closer when I when I get up to the Gloriosum. It would be a shame if it's bugs, but I, I really don't think it is. Um, anyways, the death cure. That is what we are here to talk about. So I am coming out of a cold, so I apologize if I cough here and there. I was COVID tested. It was negative. So I am COVID free, vaccine and, <laughs> vaccined and boosted, vaccinated and boosted is what I meant to say. Anyways, so I just wanna come here and update you quickly on the death cure. Finally, let's get around to it. Um, I wanted to wait till we were in my home environment till you could see my droids in my background of my death cure shot um, to really talk about the death cure because I really enjoyed it, you know? Um, Brenda might have uh, been a part of the scheme the whole time, but that's fine. Um, I still like her. You know, she made that little comment at the end, and with the epilogue, we do see that they're a part of, like, you know, some new world, whatever. Um, but that's fine. You know, Brenda could have been in on it all along. She <coughs> I felt like she was the more genuine one out of the pair of Brenda and Teresa. I really didn't like Teresa. You know, you can tell me fucking jack shit. That is the one thing I will stand by. Um, to today with my opinions as a kid. I hated Brenda. I hated uh, Teresa then and I really hate Teresa now. I, I just don't like her and honestly I was so happy when I saw her ash get crushed by that ceiling um, in like the last 20 pages of the book. When her ass got crushed I was like yes finally the wicked witch is dead. Can we get her slippers? That's how I felt at least. Um, let me change the lighting. I feel like the lighting may be fucking me up right now. Sorry if I just made things worse. Um, so yes, the death cure. I also really like how things kind of come full circle, you know? Um, he wants his memories in the first book. We come now. He refuses to get them back. Um, Chuck gets stabbed in, in the first book. We come full circle. He's still thinking about Chuck, which I think is something really important when a book does that. You know, we need lasting residual effects for our characters. And then on top of that, he had to make that decision to kill Newt. And I thought that was a great, 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 great part of the book. Um, while I was really annoyed with Thomas in the moment for like really not wanting to kill his friend, um, now in retrospect, looking back, I, I see why James Dashner did that, you know, because he had no memories coming into the maze. Chuck was one of his like really good friends. He saw die in front of his eyes. He didn't want to kill another one of his only friends. You know, Newt was one of his best friends from the maze. He did not want to kill him. But you know what? Newt was not Newt anymore. You know, he needed to be oft. Knew it was not new anymore. And I really just like how James Dashner tackled that in this book trilogy, tackled grief. And, you know, he still constantly brought it up. And it was a plot line throughout the three books. I feel like for a lot of authors, that's just something that they lose. Um, you know, but I appreciated that um, with James Dashner books. Um, I also... Why did I, yeah, I, I just really enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed The Death Cure. I would say it's like a solid 3.5 to like 3.75 book. I really liked it. Action packed at all times. You know, I don't understand why Thomas always has to be the hero, but that's the way these books are written. You know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles at the end of the day. Um, we have to take it for what it is and move on.
and that's what I'm going to do and I really enjoyed it for what it is and you know say what you like I really think there is some homoerotic tension between the core trio of Newt, Minho, and Thomas I mean it could just be brotherly love or me projecting onto the book you know it could be either but that's the way I'm feeling and I feel like I've seen it in like fan fan things before I don't know maybe I'm wrong but I feel like I'm I'm right so let me know down below but yeah those are my thoughts my final thoughts on the death care and I do want to address right now um I I'm not gonna read The Shining <laughs> you should have seen this coming um Q Dunn's interview where he talks about his favorite book The Shining and then proceeds to talk about the maze and there is there's a huge maze that freaks me out in the show imagine that one being cold yeah like in the snow too <laughs> um and if you've read the book and seen the movie we all know the answer to that um so i as well will not be reading the shining i've already read the shining i don't want to put myself through that again while i do uh i i do enjoy the suspense of King's books. There are some things that I'll go over in the outro to this video that I just don't love about The Shining and I don't want to put myself through again, so I'm not going to. Um, case line and sinker, you know? Um, yeah. So there's the, the update and that's probably the end of this video. That's not bugs, that's the spray that I sprayed on this plant because I thought it might have had bugs and it definitely doesn't. If you look at it, that one leaf back there, still kicking. Oh, am I getting a good clip of it? This is a philodendron gloriosum, by the way. Oh uh, yeah. Definitely, I, I think it's just acclimating to my home and needed more energy to put out this little guy right here. Yeah. Um. I think I'm just gonna cut the sleep off because it's like broke, so. Don't yell at me, I'm coming in with a pair of uncleaned scissors, but I, um, I'm not good at this shit. So I am, but I, I just don't, I don't know. I'm gonna cut it. Ah! So, I'm sitting down with you today to film an outro for my Dylan O'Brien, reading Dylan O'Brien's favorite books video. So you know what that means. It's time to open up my handy dandy trusty notebook. And I want to give you guys my final thoughts on how I'm feeling after this tumultuous period of time. Um, reading primary The Maze Runner trilogy. Didn't get to The Shining. I'll get to why. Okay, I've already read it, but I'll get to why I didn't get to The Shining. Um, but reading The Maze Runner trilogy was a really eye-opening experience for me. Okay, and we'll get to why. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts about all three books right now. So I just wanna let everyone know um, that I wanna take back all of the slander that I have thrown upon James Dashner's name for, uh, when did I read this? In 2014, it's now almost 2022. So almost eight years, um, seven years now, I've been throwing slander um, and shit on this man's name on this man's writing, on The Maze Runner, and it was not justified whatsoever, um, especially after reading the entire trilogy. Uh, I will say there are some things wrong with it, like it's certainly not a perfect trilogy, but by all means it is not the steaming pile of shit that I thought the first book to be when I read it in 2014, when I was like 16 years old. So I know this video did turn into me just reading the Maze Runner trilogy. I understand that. Um, and I personally am fine with that because of the feelings that I had towards the Maze Runner going into this video. I was totally biased against it. Let's just whip out the, the first book because that's the only one I have a physical copy of. So let's whip it out right now. And it has Dylan O'Brien's face on it. We always will love that. I have lots of thoughts and feelings about the Maze Runner. Like I said, want to apologize to James Dashner, want to apologize to the entire cast of this movie for ever doubting why you wanted to be in it. Because this book is much better than I thought it was when I first read it. I remember my thoughts when first reading it were Thomas is annoying, um, all he does is complain, 
Um, why isn't he just being thrust into the situation and running with it? Um, like Triss or Katniss Everdeen or like some of our other YA protagonists from this time of YA land, dystopia. I always thought, why can't he just do it? You know, get over it. G you know, get over it. Put on your fucking big boy pants and just do it. Um, fuck. I was so immature. Uh, that's all I fucking have to say about that because when you read this for me now as a 23 year old 23 year old woman not a 16 year old teenager um all i could think about is how great this book portrays mental health um things like uh depression or you know handling grief and consequences and that's a theme throughout the entire trilogy i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the themes of brotherhood that we get throughout the first book mainly because that's when we you know were quarantined shall i say with the guys you know the lads i do wish that the trilogy as a whole we had more focus on the the woman gladers that we find out exist but we don't get to see that that would have been great um even if james dashner came and did like a book on it like i'd be down for that you know we know how it ends but make it different make it spicy they got out a couple days earlier you know what about them makes them different i would like to see it you know because this is a whole lot of testosterone i don't really care about male testosterone but like i said i really enjoyed this book i personally feel homoerotic tension between new minho and thomas again not sure like i said in my vlog clip if that's just me projecting or if that's like a thing i don't know but the first book the only thing i really hated about this um was the amount of fucking humping he did mentally for Teresa. I hate Teresa. I've hated her since the beginning. You know, Wicked fucks. You know, they suck. Wicked sucks. I don't fucking give a fuck about Wicked, and I've known that from the fucking beginning. And this bitch comes in with Wicked is good written on her arm, and Thomas is like, I fucking love you. Like, thank God that is not a running theme throughout this trilogy. That's all I have to say. I gave the first book a three- I would say, you know, now going back a three stars out of out of five stars, a solid three star read right here, the Maze Runner. Then we're moving on to the Scorch Trials. And honestly, the Scorch Trials is a little forgettable. It's like the journey book, you know, the filler in the trilogy, but it was still, you know, it was still good. It was still a three, three star book. Um, but basically the, the premise of the Scorch Trials is they escape the maze, right? Obviously. And then they have to do this trek across the Scorch, which is the area where the sun flares like destroyed the, the earth, the planet, and they have to get to the sanctuary, whatever that is. So the book is basically just a lot of traveling, but what I like about this book is it's a lot of Thomas like internally figuring things out, internally thinking a lot about Chuck, internally thinking a lot about Teresa, where's Teresa? But then he starts to distrust Teresa, thank the motherfucking Lord because I hate Teresa. He sees that Teresa's just as shady as I thought she was from the fucking beginning. Thank God. You know, we get that in this book. We meet Brenda. Um, Brenda's the one that I remember specifically because I like Brenda, even though she might be a little involved with Wicked there too. But I still like her better than Teresa, you know, because Thomas didn't like her at first. Thomas didn't jump all over her. You know, he had the thoughts while he was thinking about Teresa when he had these thoughts. He still was not all over Brenda when he met her. It was a slow burn easing into, you know, enjoying Brenda's presence. And I personally really enjoyed that a lot more than the insta love that we got in the first book with Teresa. Okay, so that's pretty much the Scorch Trials. And that's kind of what I have to sum it up in a nutshell. Three stars. It was kind of boring. Still good. Um, still a solid novel because we get a lot of Thomas internal and, you know, we see how far Teresa will go just to save Thomas, you know? Fuck Teresa, though. Fuck Teresa. Anyways, three stars for the Scorch Trials. We move on to The Death Cure, and I think that I liked this book the best out of the three. I really enjoyed The Death Cure. I gave it probably a 3.5 stars out of 5. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed how we get just, you know, deeper, deeper. He's out of love now with Teresa. Thank the Lord. I hate Teresa. And you see, that is a running theme throughout uh, this trilogy with me is I like the books more as we dislike Teresa more. Anyways, I think this book is much more um, fast paced than The Scorch Trials. I finished it in like a day and a half. I also really, really like how 
things come full circle when it comes to Thomas and his friends and Thomas and his memories and just Thomas in general. So like we start off the first book, Thomas is really scared and doesn't know what's happening. He's dropped in a place with no memories and has to create like a bunch of new memories. And we see him do that throughout this trilogy. And we see in the beginning of the third book, him refusing to get his memories back. I really like that evolution. We also see in the third book, him, what was it, what was it? Oh yes, we also see throughout the trilogy, Thomas's residual effects um, from Chuck. But then we get to see just how much it affected him and like how much it affects his decisions when we get to the part where he has to kill Newt. You know, Newt is begging him and he cannot do it for like a minute in the book, you know? And it's a really intense scene. He ends up finally doing it because it's for the best for Newt. But just like Chuck was taken away from him, his one of his best friends, Chuck, he didn't want to take away Newt and he would be taking Newt away himself. Granted, Newt was not the same Newt, but he would have to take Newt away himself. And I that really, I think, affected him and his character. But I really, really liked that part of the book. I think the best part of the book was when Teresa got s squashed, um, like the Wicked Witch of the whatever in Wizard of Oz, you know, with the house that comes down, she gets the ruby red slippers. Um, that was my favorite part of the entire book because I fucking hate Teresa, as we all know, and I was happy to see that bitch squashed. Anyways. Oh, another thing overarching. And I also really like how at the end, they all think they're going to this sanctuary um, for their own benefit. But at the end of the day, it's still like a wicked project. <laughs> you know, Brenda's in on it, make some comment. And I really like that. Like, I like how at the end of the day, wicked is still kind of controlling all of their <laughs> movements and like what they're doing, even if they think they're making those free will decisions themselves. I think it like is really reminiscent of the real world and dystopian, if one shall say. Granted, that is the name of the genre. Anyways, I do want to talk about how this book talks about a pandemic, the flare. Um, it's really fucked up to read about now in 2021 after coronavirus. Um, you know, it's just fucked up to read about. And if I knew it was a, about like a pandemic, would I still have read it? Yes. But I would have known going into it. That's the thing about me. I like to go into books not knowing much. So I went into all of these books really knowing the first one, but not knowing much about what the flare really was or anything like that. And, you know, it was a little disturbing to read about in 2021. Um, I live in New York. I have been vaccinated since I've been able to be vaccinated, boosted since I've been able to be boosted. I continue to wear my masks. I don't not wear my masks because I just feel more comfortable with them on, you know? Number one, less germs. Number two, do not perceive me, you know? You know, so it's just like really fucking weird to read about a pandemic in today's day and world where we're currently trying to deal with a pandemic at large and people who don't want to believe it's real, uh, er, Mm, how um anyways yeah that was just a little side note about this trilogy that it's not like it rubbed me the wrong way because that's like a valid thing to write about for a dystopian book but it was a little weird it was a little weird reading about the flare and you know how it was released by governments and wicked came about to like try to find the cure and how like you know pharmaceutical companies still won't give out the intellectual property to like make vaccines worldwide so we could finally like stop this fucking thing um but you know corporation 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 just like wicked wicked is good anyways that's enough of my little rambly rant there about pharmaceutical companies all right so let's now move on to why i'm not gonna read the shining for this video i'm sorry don't hate me okay I just don't like The Shining. So, and also in his interview, you can watch it. Someone asks like, what's your favorite book? And he goes The Shining. And then he proceeds to talk about The Maze, like the interviewer and Dylan, like Dylan doesn't correct him. Did you read The Maze Runner book? Yes. What's your favorite book of all time? Oof, wow, of all time? This is, this is important. The Shining. There's a maze in The Shining. I love The Shining. <laughs> And there is, there's a huge maze that freaks me out of the shiny. Imagine that one being cold, yeah. like in the snow, too. <laughs> so neither of them have, have read The Shining. Both of them assuming that the maze is in the book when the maze is in fact not in the book at all. Um, so I decided that since I've read it prior, that I'll just fucking talk about it because I don't want to reread that shit. 
um, because it, it took a real mental toll on me when I read it. Stephen King knows how to write suspense. He knows how to write thrill. He knows how to write horror tone wise. Okay. No one can take that away from him. But what I will say is that there's so much unnecessary shit in these books that I don't fucking like to read. And I guess people like to read it because it makes the character like these characters are flawed. I get it. Okay. But like, it seemed really fucking excessive to me and again like I feel like I'm just like a walking like uh what is it when they just got a walking contradiction because I'm like yeah like I understand like I, I objectively it's good but like for me I fucking hated it like objectively I see why he made all of these um no not all of them I see why he made a lot of these like really crazy decisions but why like I don't want to read them I just don't so I'm not gonna read them again not gonna put myself through that again but mainly what I want to talk about is the misogyny and the racism, you know, and Stephen King, the Stephen King that I've read at least, and it's been his older one, so not his newer work. So this could be kind of Ill irrelevant for his new stuff. But in his old stuff, I feel like he would just want to put um, a really racial slur, like he, he put it on like every chapter. And it's like, what's the point? What's the point of that, sir? Like, I get your books were written in the 70s. But like, can you just like hold that from your language? I don't, I don't think it's that hard. You know, it shouldn't be that difficult, Stephen King, to not use that language. You know, like show people are flawed without them using the hard R, okay? Is it, is it hard? It shouldn't be. It really is, it's not hard. Not saying like, like, uh, I just, it's such a nuanced conversation, right? Because you don't, you don't want some sort of sterile, diluted horror movie where we talk about nothing and the main character is supposed to be flawed, but he has no real flaws about him. But at the same time, it's like, it's so jarring to hear some of this language now for me to read. I just fucking hate it. I hate reading it. So that's why I'm not going to read it again. Also, as Jack goes down his rabbit hole, he starts to get more and more misogynistic against his wife. And there's specifically a part in the book, I will never forget it, where he's having his internal monologues back and forth to himself. And he's reminiscing on a time his father beat his mother. And he's talking about how he can relate. And he understands now why his father had to beat his mother. He gets it now. Again, I get these things are written because he's a bad guy, you know, to add nuance. He's getting like possessed by the spirits of the hotel. I get all of that. But at the same time, I'm not going to put myself through reading it again because I, I really was like, just, I did not like reading it. I felt gross and icky reading scenes like this, reading the, the racist scenes that he would put into the novel. Like, and that's honestly why I've been having a hard time picking up another Steve King because I don't want to read any of that shit. And it was in Pet Cemetery too. So I don't know what the fuck to do. I have Billy Summers on my Libby right now because my grandfather insists that I read it. So I will for him and I will let you know how I feel about Billy Summers, but I'm not putting myself through The Shining again. I'm not watching the movie again. Um, shout out to all of the family that has read The Shining the book and prefers the hedge monsters over the maze. And the end of the movie too. They talked about how he froze in the maze at the end of the movie. Complete change from the end of the book. The end of the book you know, the, the ugh, this is what I'm talking about. Stephen King is a great writer. In the very beginning of the book, the guy, the owner of the hotel talks about you need to watch the boiler. If you do not watch the boiler, things will go wrong. The hotel will blow up. Guess what? As Jack goes down his rabbit hole, he fucking forgets about the boiler. But his son, Danny, remembers and gets him and his mother out. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to fucking shake someone. And, it's like, I wish that could have been the ending because it's so much more relevant to The Shining because Danny's using his sixth, sixth sense. He is being active and remembering that plot point is in complete, completely to the wayside, you know, because it comes back to bite Jack in the ass, to bite the hotel in the ass. The hotel did not want Jack to forget about the boiler, okay? But the hotel also forgot about the boiler because it was so involved with Jack, okay? Okay? And I wish that we could have had that type of ending at the end of the movie, but instead he just freezes in a maze. So yeah, these are the reasons that I'm not going to read The Shining again. But th this is my proof that I have read it. And I think I gave it like a three star review. You know, we're going to be moving on. I'm not going to be reading The Shining for this. Because you know what? Dylan O'Brien didn't either, and I'm not going to. I love the shine. <laughs> so overall, what are what's my ranking? So like I said, it goes 
the death cure, the maze runner, and then the scorch trials. Yeah, that's definitely my ranking. Do I think Dylan O'Brien read all of these books? Hmm, yes. Um, to be an actor in a movie, you probably have to read the source material that you're acting upon. And Dylan O'Brien is a dedicated and amazing actor. So I'm sure that he read, or at least skimmed, spark noted, the trilogy, you know? I would hope so, at least. I know for a fucking damn fact he didn't read The Shining, which is why I'm not going to read The Shining, okay? I know for a damn fact he didn't read that, all right? And Dylan, if you're, if you're watching this, you're probably not. Um, but I would like you to issue a formal retracting uh, statement. Uh, a formal statement retracting the fact that The Shining is your favorite book. It's your it's your favorite movie. Possibly, maybe not. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Don't talk about The Shining the movie when you're trying to talk about Shining the book. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm asking, Dylan. Um, other than that, you're as sexy as ever. You know? What can I say? There's nothing else to say. You know, I love going to my family holidays um, and I'm no longer an outsider. You know, I was for the first six years of my life um, screaming to the top of my lungs about Teen Wolf, uh, Tyler Posey, Dylan O'Brien specifically. But now I'm at my family holiday. I hear all too well music video, Dylan O'Brien. I'm like, yes, you know, no one can stop me. No one can stop us girls, us tweens, us Teen Wolfers. We were the beginning, the original. If you saw him in the first time or Mile High or Mile Higher or something, I think that's the name of it. And I believe those came out before Teen Wolf. Kudos to you. Kudos. Um, I did not. I started watching Teen Wolf in season 3A. What's your favorite season? My favorite season's 3B. This was me reading Dylan O'Brien's favorite books, aka me reading the Maze Runner trilogy and then not reading The Shining because he didn't either. I love The Shining. <laughs> if you liked this video, give it a big big old thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Um, leave a comment. What did you read the Maze Runner trilogy? What's your favorite book? Who's your favorite character? And what's your favorite moment? Um, my favorite book's The Death Cure. Favorite character is Minho. And favorite moment is when Thomas kills Newt. Um, let me know down below. If you didn't like this video, um, unlike it, then unsubscribe to my channel. Um, leave a creative hate comment down below. I really suggest that you do. Um, I'm not sure about what, you know, I do, I've worn this sweater before in a different color in my videos. If you want to, you know, outfit repeater, that's fine. Um, I'll gladly take that title as an outfit repeater. Yeah, that's all folks. That's all I got to say for today. I apologize that you had to see my, my dying plant, but I, I felt the need to show you especially after it being in all my clips. I just, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. My parents are getting home, my dogs are starting to bark. I gotta cut this shit out, all right? Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. Please stop sending me fan mail. This is a serious message to everybody watching my update right now. Peace and love, peace and love. I'm warning you with peace and love, but I have too much to do. So no more fan mail. Thank you, thank you. And no objects to be signed. Nothing. Uh, anyway, peace and love, peace and love. Hope you guys are having a great day, month, rest of 2021. It's December. You know, fuck. Um, good 2022 if you're reading it. Reading it. Watching this then. Bye.